Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So next speaker, um, it's kind of be going to be quite a cool presentation. The, the talk, it's called Beginning to the End, or Full 3D Design Loop. And I would like to welcome to the stage um, Eduardo Cárdenas. He's an industrial designer at Curve ID, a New York-based award-winning consultancy offering a complete industrial design service. In the, 25, in the past 25 years, they have been collaborating with international clients and major consumer brands through to the new startups and entrepreneurs, each with a different need. Yet they both one thing, they both have one thing. They're, they yet they've brought one thing to all of them, sorry, their conviction that design is all about making connections. So welcome, um, Eduardo. Hello. Do you, you guys, are, though. Can you guys can you turn your, your video on? There we go. Hey, hello. Right, welcome. <laughs> I'm problems here. How are you guys? Uh, give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Um, I'll leave you to it. See you later for the Q&A. Well, thank you. Bye. Give me one second. Okay, can you guys see the screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm Eduardo. I work in Curve ID. I've been working with Curve ID for the last three years. We are an industrial design studio here based in New York. As you were saying, we have collaborated with so many clients over the last 25, 30 years. We, we have been working and involved in like a lot of industrial design projects, like all sorts of types of industrial design application like transportation, furniture, um, industrial design equipment, house goods, etc. Um, just to give you like a little context, uh, we have been always into technologies, right? Um, we like to improve our design process with those technologies. And uh, a couple of years ago, we found in, in VR like a nice, like a nice way to, to take advantage of the new stuff that you guys are developing. And we learned so many things about VR and, and gravity sketch, and it has been like an improvement in our current design process. And we just want to talk about uh, some tools and how do we usually work backstage and when, what usually people don't see about the process that we have in our design studio. Um, just to give you like a, like a quick timeline that is pretty cool. Uh, back in 1993, our partners like Roberto and Tony, they, found, they, they founded the studio and they started working like with um, a lot of designers in, in automotive transportation. Um, they were involved in, in CAD, and the early development of the CAD programs and ergonomic studies. And you see there's a lot of pictures <clears throat> of how they usually, uh, how they used to work with, with mock-ups, with clay. Uh, it's even interesting that they, they made visualization models at that time. It was pretty rough, but it's kind of cool to see how we have evolved in all those years, um, just making real-size mock-ups from cardboard, um, just building huge tractors and cars and automotive stuff, just with small pieces of cardboard, uh, just putting everything together in place. And then if you keep going further, um, we have managed to, to evolve a little bit on that. And we started 
building huge cabs into our studio, like put it, putting pieces together. These these mock-ups were huge. And they they cost a lot of money. Um, they took a lot of time also and effort. So it's pretty it's pretty tough. Uh, but that's the way we used to work at that time, right? Just building full size mock-ups to make design corrections or just to put everything together. So you can see like a couple of pictures of how, how we used to handle those type of projects on design. Uh, of course, we were implementing CAD ergonomics and everything together. And then we keep going further. And a couple of years ago, we, we learned about VR. We, we started uh, learning and, and we use Gravity Sketch now for like four or five years, if I'm not wrong. But at the beginning, it was pretty fun. We thought it wasn't that accurate. Uh, we were just playing around with splines and it was pretty fun to, to go in like an infinite space and just start drawing some lines, putting everything together. Like it was really easy to, to put every idea just quickly on 3D. But then with the time, we were just learning how to translate these mockups that we used to do on, on full size. We were just learning how to do them digitally. And that's like a cool thing that this technology has brought to us because we started learning so much about imports, about hard points. Like we usually receive data from clients and we were able to put that together with, with the VR and gravity sketch inside that space. Um, and we were saving a lot of time, we were saving a lot of money. Um, you can imagine how much it took to build like a full size cabin in cardboard. And we were just we were just placing lines and splice on, on VR. And we were just every, we were everyone, we had everyone just looking at the screen and just interacting with one another. So it was pretty amazing. Then we start developing that advantage and that skill. And then uh, right now we can, we can review full size VR mockups with our clients and we have, completely evolved from traditional and physical things and models and prototypes to digital full size. So right now, even with the pandemic, we started doing like these evaluations inside the space, inside the space. We invited clients, they can they can meet with us in the cost space, the cost catch rooms. We can take decisions. Uh, we can share data with Colombia, with Australia, with whoever you want at the same time, at the same space. And we were just making a lot of projects like that. So we want to show you our crazy design loop. That's like what we're going to show you today. Um, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of projects. Each one of the projects has like a, it's different path. You have many tools, you have many approaches on how to how to do this crazy line and just take all the skills you need, put them together, and then just have like a nice output for clients, make everyone happy. So this is basically our crazy design loop. We have so many things to take into account, like for each stage of the design process even like from, from the early beginning, like doing research, um, doing a sketching, brainstorming, getting into VR, just messing with imports, exports. We receive data from one people, we receive data from another guy. Engineering says one thing, marketing says another one. Uh, we need to have meetings, exports, prototypes. So this is basically like a, like a crazy thing. <laughs> That, we, that we're putting together and actually nobody sees what we have backstage at the studio. So that's, that's what we call our designer's toolbox. It's the same path. These are some of the tools that we use. We think nowadays you, you need to handle and learn a lot of software just to be able to communicate faster and easy. So, we're always using like sketching, 
uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, maybe we jump right into Gravity Sketch or VR at the beginning, it could be at the end. We like to visualize on Keyshot, we like to do VR. Um, of course, we have the CAD, we have different softwares just to translate and do imports, exports. But that's that's what we want to, to show you with some stuff that we have here. Like it's not like a unique path. You can combine all those tools however you want, but that's like the cool thing at the end. So we have we have a couple of cool projects just to show you. This is one study case just to to highlight the workflow and how can we how can we show that in a in a really nice way. This is like an internal study that we we are developing right now. Um, it's basically a an autonomous bus. So we just wanted to to show you where we are, where we're at, and and just to highlight through all the process. And hope you have some questions at the end. So you can see, actually, now these days with all those tools that I was just talking about, it's so easy to start. Um, you can. Depending on each one, you, you can feel comfortable just sketching on 2D. Like for example, we use Photoshop and we just learn from references. We start placing some lines on 2D on the Wacom before getting into VR or any other stuff. You can do even like a napkin a sketch, but this is just like a rough, simple process just to start with an idea. So with some basic lines, you can get you know, like the concept you, you're thinking of and you just need to get, get it out of your head. And that's what we usually do at the beginning. So um, we like to sketch a lot and that's, that's really cool because um, it enables us to, to transition from one place to another and just share things with clients easier. Uh, we are always sketching on Photoshop we usually do underlays. We have res references. Sometimes we export from Photoshop right into, into, into Gravity Sketch and then we trace the image. Uh, some of you guys already know how, how is the workflow in Gravity, but it's pretty fun to start always on a sketch or even with like a pencil or a pen. A pen. For example, on this path, we went right into gravity, into VR. And then, so we just saw the sketch, we brought the sketch into the space, and then we were able to place everything together. We got some hard points, some, some real data from the tires, from the floor. We positioned some, some ergonomics, some, some mannequins. We just started learning because it's, it's like learning in 3D. You just need to <clears throat> translate your sketch into something real. So you can turn it around and twist it and learn everything. And you just keep refining layers and layers and layers. And this stage is pretty fun. Sometimes what we do is we just keep it so simple, like super rough. Uh, we like to visualize rough ideas and we, we can go right, right into visualization software. And then we just have like a nice output of the idea. We don't need to spend like days working out the design. We can we can get some some quick lines and just place them in Keisha and have like different interactions, reflections, um, some lightnings, materials, textures. We can use them as underlays. And then it's just like a whole loop. We can go back again and do the same refinement. But it's pretty cool. So we with this internal project, we decided to to focus on the seats on the on the vehicle, and then we're just showing you how we how we handle the the design of the seat. This is an initial sketch we did on the on the concept. It's super rough. You can barely see the design direction of it, and we're just building layer by layer. Um, taking perspective and putting lines where we want where we want them to be. Um, but this is this is just in our heads. 
So we just play with colors. Um, we have some mood boards inspiration. Uh, but then at the end, we, we get like a nice digital sketch that we can use to go back again and start with some more accurate things. So this is how we normally work, going from like quick splines and sketches, taking step by step, adding color refinements, doing like nicer lines. And that's how we present to the clients. Like we just have to these sketches most of the time. And what we did here was after the sketches, we went back in gravity and we, we started this uh, quick line mock-up, right? We were just trying to, to transition from the sketch to gravity. So this is pretty abstract and you can barely see like some quick splines, but it's kind of cool and you don't need to be super accurate. You don't need to be like an expert of, of a sketching or anything like that because the software allows you to do some basic stuff. Um, the next step we did on this was like just placing volumes. The design, we didn't have the, the design direction at all because we, we just have the sketch, but we like to start playing with volumes and with colors, um, just trying to imagine how, how things would look like, uh, how we position the, the different items that we need to, to put on in place. And it's all layers and layers and layers, but it's pretty simple and super fast on, on VR because it's all in 3D data. So at any point of the stage of the process, you can just export and send someone the information or you can get a nice rendering. So it's so easy to, to control. That's it. That's the cool thing about knowing all this software because you can stop the process right in where you want and then you can you can handle different outputs. That's that's how we work. And then gravity allows us to do like nice outputs and refinements. So this is again a refinement, funnel refinement, and just getting nicer splines, nicer details. This could be like a like a more detailed model in, in VR about the seat, about, the, about this concept seat, where we can imagine just like the the backrest, the I don't know, like the consoles, you can you can take so many directions here, but it's kind of cool to have to have the model right in the space and even with the flashlight or whatever, just twist around the model and just watching it from 360 and in scale. Uh, we usually at this point have we like to have like a sketch meetings where we all get into the same room in the studio. So now that we're working from home, um, everyone has their own headset. So we just dive, dive right into the space and we just make corrections in real time. And then we just save so much time on, on the projects. This is another step. Uh, this is CAD. We're working on, we, so we exported the lines that we just saw on, on gravity sketch on VR, and then we can we can do like a more real realistic uh, concept development of the idea, right? You can see just just by sketching on the space, it's so hard to to be accurate, right? Because you don't have like even if you have hard points, it's gonna be easier. But then sometimes it changes a little bit on the design. But you can always go back and forth. So this would be like the output of, of a more refined CAD that is not even finished. It's just, we like to play with renderings. We like to play with colors. We can go back from this point and we can start again. We can, we can export this again into OBJ and then go back into gravity to make more details. At this point, it's just like a matter of of having like a parametric model and then just being able to, to modify it in the loop. It's pretty fun. It's crazy because at the beginning you have you have nothing and then it's it's super abstract and 
either way you you choose you can just grab whatever tools you need and then just start mixing them uh, and you can get like some really nice output we like to play with Kishot a lot we use it for visualizing and for animations uh, we have a lot of projects uh, and and nice outputs from from Kishot so this is just like an example of of how we were working with that idea we just saw. So you just getting in there, uh, you, you wanna send like a client, like a really nice stuff, work in progress, you can easily do that just by, by having this work in progress model. It doesn't need to be super finished. We just need to get like some, some updates. And then just, really quick we have, we can have like a more realistic and visually cool model or project and this is just like in a couple of days or even hours depending um, and we can share this data with marketing we can we have been sharing this data with engineering guys they it's it's not finished of course but it's it's all going in the same loop so it's really cool to see how can we go from these lines, from these quick splines to, to having like a proper, more realistic industrial design product that we can share and we can keep developing. That's, that's what, we, what we want to show you guys. And yeah, this is just like, I gather some screenshots of real time working on, on the different softwares that we use. So it's, it's not like an, a specific path. It depends on what the client needs, but we're always switching. And that's why we had that crazy sketch because it's like infinite ways to do the same process, but it's nice if you learn a lot of tools. We like to play with renderings. We like to, to make, we, we like to see things in a cool way. Uh, it could be really simple, but we like to put it like nicely for the for the eyes of the clients. And just like that, with, with a really simple model and step by step, we can have like some nice outputs and renderings. And it's just like a a whole loop, right? And then here we go again. <laughs> At this point, we usually go back and start again. There's projects like we we need to do over and over and over and over, and then you just need to cut the line and then just go back and do the same process again, get the feedback from, from the different teams and just redo the same process over and over. But that's the that was like a little showcase we had on on that specific ongoing concept project that we have. But we have tons of projects on VR. This is, I'm gonna show you like a couple of images. I can go quick because I don't know if we have a lot of time, but we were working on this boathouse design um, and it was pretty cool because we got into designing spaces. So we were just transitioning from really small products or cars to, to spaces and house housewares. And that was pretty fun. We did the creative process inside Gravity Sketch. So we were doing these full size, huge different variations for the designs for the ball house. We were, we were supposed to work with containers. So we actually grabbed the, the real container data and then we were sketching on top of that. And it's really simple, it's, it's like a cartoon but it has so many information and you can, you can share this with anyone and then you can realize uh, in full size, how, how, can we, how can we see things like that? And it's pretty fun to, to work on these. I remember we were just making decisions like we were going full scale and we, we were like in hundred percent scale and that thing was huge. And then we, we were just, just designing like right there. So I'm gonna go 
a little faster because we have so many things. These are like just some rough models that we we built. Like at this point, it's, it's just like the first phase of getting that idea that you, you have in, in mind, then just placing it somewhere nicely. This is another project we have. So this is with Perkin Elmer. We, we design industrial machines and equipment. So now on these days, we are able to get some data and we place the data inside the space and we can just make uh, annotations or modifications. We can remove covers. We can put lights, LEDs. Uh, we can get into contact live with marketing, with engineering. We can just agree on something and then we just go out of the two and then we go again into the same loop. And it's so simple because you have the, the machines right there. We have We have tons of projects and different explorations. This, this was another project that we did on, on art. We were working on a sculpture uh, in Colombia. And then this is pretty rough. And as you can see, there's no detailed stuff in here, but it's just looking cool. And that's like how we like to start things, just rough volumes and organic stuff. We like to visualize it and then we take it to another level. We like to do concept sketching. This was just explorations that we did on some sneaker designs, uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. You just put some nice splines into the space, just what you have on, on mind. And you just end up with a nice detail and pack of information. This was an oil project that we did a couple of years ago, uh, learning the software actually on gravity. And it's pretty cool because we, we got the information from engineering. So we were building the concept car based on real data. So that's, that's something that we like to, to show to people like we, we, of course, we can dream and get in the space and do something really abstract or concept, but we use, but we are also using gravity sketch and VR tools for, for real projects. Um, so we can have like a nice concept or an idea a sketch, and then we can make it real and accurate on VR. Um, so that was another project that we did, just learning the tools. Uh, it was kind of cool because we, 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 we stepped into CAD for this project and we did the interiors. We even 3D printed the steering wheel in like one day. So, so it was just learning the, the whole process and just getting from one step to the other one super fast. Um, of course, it improved our, our design process. And then we have some nice information to, to go and do some nice renderings, share some data, and just go back again. I'm going to keep scrolling, but we have done so many things in VR. It has been so, so useful. This is another project that we did. On cookware, we were designing a handle. So you see, we did the, the tracing, we did some, some lines on, on VR and we even got like a nice detailed gravity sketch surface. But you can even 3D print it and have like a proper um, prototype right there. But it's, it's pretty cool. We have been learning so much about how to mix the different techniques. So here you can see again, like what's the difference between something on VR and then we can do like nice surfacing and then we can compare it to like a proper CAD model that is pretty accurate. So 
that's how we work. We like to do that. We like to start really simple, but then we like to get into the details and zoom in and then just do nice, nice models. Then we can send easily to clients and share renderings. Uh, how much time do we have left? I think we're almost done. We can have like some questions. This is a project that, that we did a couple of years back in Colombia. But we were just um, like getting used in the tool and just tracing it to get more and more details. And it's, it's pretty interesting. So um, that was another project that we did on a bicycle. And we took, we, uh, we were working a lot in gravity sketch and then we, we output a really nice cat for the bike. But we have been working so, so much with gravity and it has improved like a lot. So we were able just to share things with clients we like to do these co-creation rooms where we, we have like um, exhibitions. I don't know how to call them, <laughs> but we just place all the data inside and then we're able to share with so many people different design directions. And we just, we just connect with whoever we want at the same time. Yeah, I think that's it. In, we can do like some questions. I can go back and see awesome something regard. more detail. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like it's all really amazing work. We have some questions and some comments from the audience. And as well, um, everyone out there, if you want to raise your hand and ask them yourself, feel free to do so. Uh, so the first one is from Noah Sussman. Are you working the other way around? I mean, are you bringing CAD databases, ergonomics, human factors? into Gravity Sketch for reference. How long have you been using Gravity Sketch? And did you pick uh, it up in school? Okay, yes. Yeah, we have been working the other way also. Because some of the times we receive data from, from engineering and we have so many constraints and references to follow. So for example, we're working on some tractors and we have like the ergonomics and then we have like the clearances we need to to cover and respect like from the from the users. So we we create like these CAD outputs of the of those ergonomics and like the boundaries and then we put them inside gravity. And then we can see in the actual space the boundaries that we need to respect for the projects. And that's super cool. Because <laughs> you don't usually see that on a sketch. So we can export engineering data and write into the very first steps of the of the projects. And gravity allows us to like to put everything together. You can put engineering stuff, you can bring logos, you can bring uh, data, images, sketches, you can have rough lines, you can have accurate lines, and you just put everything there. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, how long have you been using it? You have been using it for quite a while, no? Oh, yes. I think it's like <clears throat> four years now, or a little more. Since yeah. the very beginning, yeah. almost. <laughs> um, all right, some good comments. Thank you. That was fun. This is exciting and serious good shit. <laughs> Those are awesome. From being called conceptualization to interior design, it's quite impressive that you guys have such a great variety of projects, which are, which are the principles that you follow in order to create amazing projects, no matter for what industry you're working. Like, do you have some like principles that you follow? Oh, let, me, let me read that again. Yeah, so which are the principles that you follow in order to create amazing projects, no matter for what industry you're working for? Uh, I mean, we, we usually do like, even if we have like a lot of tools, uh, it's easier to get lost, but we, we usually maintain like the same spirit and the same cycle. 
Uh, we, we just don't go crazy. And if we go crazy, we can go back. <laughs> Uh, but we usually share with everyone in the team. We usually do like our brainstorm and research. We, we, we don't like to, to like go and show and export anything that somebody does. Like we, we, we try to keep it like the old fashioned way, but with new tools, if that, if that works. Keeping it simple, do you, do you bring the Gravity Sketch info into cinema, can you modify the gravity sketch info in cinema? I imagine they- Okay, so, so yeah, we have been using cinema for d and uh, Blender also, but um, just to manage like um, normals and, and polygons, because somebody, uh, sometimes you need to, like sometimes the normals are flipped in the, in the model, so we just, we just had to learn like from all different softwares how to export data onto Gravity Sketch. But now you can do that on Kisho as well. So we were just learning how to flip normals and maybe animations as well. We can, we, we have done some animations in cinema with some data from Gravity. I'm not like an expert on that, but I think you can you can do that, like you can modify gravity sketch stuff and exports on cinema. And something really important, I mean, you sort of touched on it on your presentation, but like something really important about Curve ID is that you've always had a 3D workflow since the very beginning, right? It's almost kind of like one of the things that made you stand out from any other consultancy before. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, the, the slide from, the slide that we just saw from, from the early beginnings, I wasn't even born yet in, in 1993. And Alberto and Tony were just doing mock-ups, full size with cardboard, with, with clay. And that's super cool because now we're doing the same thing, but in VR, like he's, he's going into a VR and he's making the same splines in the same way, but we, we, it doesn't exist until you export it. But that's that's like a cool, yeah, thing that that we mentioned there, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's 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 kind of like true testament to, in reality, it doesn't really matter which tool you use, as long as it's allowing you to express yourself and like bring the idea that you have out. And obviously, before we had other type of technology and now you know as we move forward we're going to start having more and more different types of technologies and it's only like we shouldn't kind of like get married with any tool and it sounds yeah. weird like, from me uh, but you know that's how we think about that's it. why we have like i don't know like 10 or more software that we use in the studio each one of us like dominate different tools and then we just bring them together and we share and but yeah that's not like the only way to work yeah. Like, All right. Uh, we have a question from Jim Colayas. Question from SolidWorks user. Is it possible in Gravity Sketch to create surfaces with precise dimensions? For example, a flat surface. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a question for Gravity Sketch, but for example, a flat surface <laughs> uh, exactly three inches away from another feature to allow mating into SolidWorks assembly of parts. Thanks. Um, with precise dimensions, we have a dimensions feature um, now in the tool, but being exactly super precise as in dimensions, it's something that is not part of Gravity Sketch. Um, and we can uh, make sure to answer these kind of like offline, but basically for Gravity Sketch, we are enabling people to express themselves and kind of like use their body and their kind of like spatial awareness to create as opposed to having to input kind of like keyboard and mouse uh, yeah numeric values um cool all right i think those are all the questions that we had in the chat which have a lot of thank yous from the audience and we have a lot of like impressive work comments <laughs> not a lot of questions um yeah so thank you so much eduardo for for being here, for walking us through all of the work that you have been working on. It's truly like, it's just kind of like impressive what you've done with the tool. And, and <laughs> as you were saying, you had so much work in there that you had to kind of like flip yeah. it quickly. 
We just left yes. like half of the things that we have done. And I yes. think it was, I was going really fast because I wanted to show everything, but yeah. I mean, something that we didn't, we didn't speak, I mean, I was already saying goodbye, but like, I, I'm just remembering like one thing that we didn't speak so much and like went in depth into is that you are combining the, like in a way you were saying that you first, uh, when Curve ID started, you were being really physical and then you changed everything to more digital tools. But in reality, you're still kind of like mixing both. And that's kind of like the interesting workflow that you're following because now you have mm -hmm. these mock-ups and these kind of like prototypes and like physical things that you create. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like it's, elements. Yeah, it's really cool. Combine. I think I didn't talk about that, but but on the timeline, I don't know if you remember, let me bring that up. We have, um, if you can see here, like we we used to have like mock-ups, but then we, we were doing like a mixed type of thing where we have like still the seed configuration and mock-up. And then we, there was someone with the Googles on VR, but at the same time it was like sitting in a mock-up. So it was, that was, that was fun because it was like the mix of both. Like you were able to see the cal in the space, but you were also feeling the, the seat and the command arm and everything. And there's sometimes that like we we are in our chairs at home and then we just try to 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 settle and match the reality versus the model. Like we start placing the controllers on the, on the floor and just trying to simulate if it was real. <laughs> That's like the mixed. Yeah, stuff. I mean that's like that's an amazing workflow. Just but yeah, we transition all the way into into digital. But we still are doing like real projects, and then we need to do some real parts. So we need to go back from the from the clouds and do engineering. And I have one last question. Like, has these um made your like your work like how has this kind of like had an influence in the work that you show your your clients i mean are you bringing them into vr to show them the work or how is how is this working we are bringing them we are bringing them into vr at the at the beginning they feel scared because <laughs> sometimes they don't even have the google so we're just uh sharing our screens to show and then we are just the ones moving. And I think for someone that hasn't get in touch with 3D or a spatial software, it could be hard. But it, once they get like the Googles and they can get into the environment, it's pretty cool. They want to see every time more and more. Okay. So we have a lot of clients doing, uh, trying to set up the VR stuff so we can share and integrate them into our, our thing. I imagine the conversations are quite different, right? From before that you were used on like showing kind of like 2D images of the work. Yeah, exactly. Like on the past we did sketches and we just sent concept designs in 2D. And now these guys are able to, to dive right in the machine and we can go underneath the cables and just see the clearances and what, what components are just crashing with each other. Like that's, that's me, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part of like really enabling a 3D workflow that allows people to not have to interpret anything, right? Like you're right there seeing the thing in front of you and you exactly. can have a rich And sometimes it's super rough and, and cartoonish from, from gravity, but they just want to see more and more and fast and fast. <laughs> Like we are explaining them that it's just like a rough model, but they think it's like the final thing. So they are requesting like really nice surfaces and everything from gravity. So we're just pushing and pushing every day to to get them like a more accurate model each time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that that's the danger, right? When you when you're trying to just like keep things still, kind of like in the ideation yeah, phase. Yeah, like don't go too much. It's this is just a sketch. <laughs> But they want to see like cut right away. Yeah, that's the, that's the changing paradigm that we're seeing, right? Like it's just 
um, you know, we used to see 3D as kind of like the final thing or a really refined thing. And now when you see things in 3D, you kind of want that, but that's yeah. not how it works. They start saying like, hey, can you cut this surface? Can you extrude this? And you do something like CAD, you have like normals. Yeah. And we're like, no, 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 this is just for a sketching. Like, <laughs> we can do that later. But I guess we, we're going to reach to that point. We have a question um, here. At what point do you switch back to CAD for final surfacing slash outputs? Uh, so, I mean, we, we, at the end, we need to develop CAD always, but you can do it, um, you can do it with a pretty rough model uh, like, like this. Like you can have really quick outputs from, from this data, basically like that and then you can export it. But then you can also do like super refined models on gravity and then you can do CAD easier because it's more refined. But I would say at, at any point you can go out from gravity and go into CAD. If you, have, if you like what you have on, on the space, you can, you can refine it in CAD. Like I, I, I feel like it's like a, um, it's a help tool. Like we, we didn't have this. So you just normally do the CAD, but now we, you have like some guidance and outlines. But yeah, I guess to answer it is like at any point, when you start using the tools, you're gonna get confident and you, you're gonna know when you should go out, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eduardo, for this presentation and for showing us the amazing work. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I keep saying goodbye and everything, but there's a, a hand <laughs> raised. And I think sure. we need to have someone saying something to keep it interactive. So, Jaren, would you mind uh, turning Alberto's um, uh, mic on? Hi guys, uh, I didn't know that I can talk here. I, I mean, Gravity Skies has been very interesting for us and Curve ID also had been uh, kind of exploding on this high-end technology. And um, basically this is what is Curve ID about. Um, so, but with Gravity Sketch, uh, basically we have the tools that we had been using a hundred years ago, you know. Uh, um, when when we used to when people used to design cars uh, for uh, Ferrari like uh, 50 years ago, they just do beautiful shapes with a hammer and, and a piece of aluminum, um, and then they they just make um, like uh, models with uh, uh, wires and things. And now we have this tool that we have everything there. You know, you just go inside and bend this tubes, these wires, and you, you make these shapes and you, you can go inside and, 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 and leave, leave the design, you know, instead of watching to the design, you just go inside of the design. And, and this is just, you know, another extension of, of, of you being very, very creative. Um, so, so definitely, I mean, I see, I see that this is going to be the future or right now it is the future. Um, it is an amazing tool for someone who, who knows how to, to sketch. Uh, it's just taking all these ideas that you have in your mind and putting it in a 3D environment. And this 3D environment have also all the information necessary because you can import all the, the hard points and the engines and the whatever you need for the things to be real. Uh, something that I, I explained, um, Long time ago, I mean, when you are good at sketcher, you do these amazing drawings and, and you have your style and everything, but you lie a lot, you know? And then this, this sketch become a document and then you, <laughs> then it's a document that is a problem for you because you have to make it happen. With gravity sketch, you do the same sketch, but you don't lie and you go faster. So, so this is, really, really um, the, the big advantage for, for us to use these um, amazing tools. Thank you so much, Alberto. 
I mean, for like our virtue is also from Curve ID, in case you didn't kind of, like pick that. Yeah. One of the founders. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, I love I love how you said that. Like now, you you don't you don't have to lie or you don't lie. Okay. Um, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> no, sometimes mm -hmm. you want people to kind of like stay in the blurry lines. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, for for this uh, talk and see you everyone in in fifteen minutes for for Danilo Macchio Psycho's uh, talk. Thanks, Eduardo. Very nice. Thank you, Daniela. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.